Hello, hello, hello. God bless you. You are welcome to the prophetic hour. We bless the holy name of God. The God we are serving is a mighty God. And I know and I believe that this God will begin to work His wonders and miracles even in every life and destiny. In the name of Jesus, our life shall never remain the same again. You are all welcome to this live broadcast. We bless the holy name of God. The God we are serving is a mighty God and God will bless. We appreciate you all for those who stayed in when we are, as soon as we come on with our intro. God will bless you. Why am I saying this? I always say this because we appreciate. We appreciate you. You are staying tuned. You are waiting. You have high expectation knowing that that which God will do in your life, we don't really do. And I believe that God will work His wonders and miracles even in every life and destinies in Jesus. So we do appreciate you. And the Almighty God will bless, increase, prosper, will make you succeed and flourish in the name of Jesus. I see it and I hear it loud and clear. And I hear God say, I should tell somebody that the garment of shame has been removed. The garment of shame that the enemy placed on somebody tied around them, it has been removed. If that is you, just type removed, removed, removed. As you type that removed, every garment of shame will be removed, will be consumed, will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Because this God is going to work wonders and miracles even in us. So you are welcome once again to the prophetic hour where you receive words that would encourage your soul and lift up your spirit. Words that would encourage your soul and lift up your spirit. And we bless the holy name of God, making us to be alive today, to see another day today. We thank God for His goodness and mercy. I mean, that this God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work in Jesus. My name is Chris, Pastor Chris of Body of Christ Center, a church I pass on my wife, Pastor Funke. It's a church where Christ Himself reigns supreme and lives are touched and changed and transformed. And God will continue to bless, increase, and prosper you. And he will do a great work and a mighty work even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. So you are all welcome in Jesus' name. God will bless you, increase and prosper you. He will make you flourish in Jesus. And don't forget for our regular viewers, please, let's share, share, share. We are on two platforms as you can see on the screen right now. We are on Facebook. That's our Facebook address. So you know what? Begin to share on your timeline, share on your Facebook page, share amongst the groups you belong to. And God will begin to bless, increase, and prosper you. It's very important to share. As we begin to share, great things will take place in your life. I declare once again, great things will take place in your life. I see three different gadgets as weapons. One, two, three. And I see that people are holding this time. I say, that, what is this God? And God said, this is the weapons of the enemy that he wants to use to vex somebody who is watching. But I hear God say that these weapons will be destroyed. As I, I hear him cry out from heaven. Fire! And fire came out. And those weapons were consumed. And the enemies were left, if I can use this word, weaponless. They were left weaponless. They did not have any other weapon with them. Now, if that is you, and you want God to destroy the weapons of the enemy, just type weaponless, weaponless, weaponless. They don't have any weapon. Because I see that fire come down and destroy those three three weapons the enemy are, hold, are holding and coming and fighting against you. It has been destroyed, weaponless. And you know what? You continue to arise and shine in Jesus' name. Quickly, let me acknowledge those who are on board. God will bless you. As I'm acknowledging, please continue to share, share, share. Get as many people as possible. All your friends far and near and God will bless you. Sister Krista always on spot one. Always there. God bless you. Sister Olam will meet you and Sister Bishola always, always on spot. God will bless you. Sister Buki too. God bless you. Sister Joy. Sister um, Jean uh, uh, Louis. Sister Dotum. Sister um, Gifty. God bless you. Um, God bless you. And Sibukala all the way from Nigeria. God bless you. We really appreciate you. Sister Palace. God bless you. Mama Deshola. God bless you. And then inshallah, God bless you, sir, too. We appreciate you. God will bless sisters. Remember, God bless you. And then inshallah, God bless you, sir. So I God bless you. Sister Helen, nice to see you. God bless you. It is well with your soul. Sister Vanessa, God bless you. In the name of Jesus, my dear wife, Pastor Chris, Pastor Funke, God bless you. It is well in Jesus' name. Um, Sister Dotun, God bless you. Amen, 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 amen. I'm just trying to see those who are on board. God will bless every one of you. You're going to prosper and exert and succeed mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Please, let's get sharing, sharing, sharing. Let's invite new people on board. God will bless, increase and prosper you. Sister Ade Ola, God bless you. It is well with your soul. Sister, I'm just trying to see if there's anyone. BOCN Youth, God bless you. I appreciate you. God will bless, increase, and prosper you. 
you are highly lifted up in the name of Jesus. And Jehovah God will begin, Sister Iyabo, God bless you, now to see you. Sister Dickiness, for lack of God bless you. God will bless, increase, and prosper you all. Those who have not seen Pastor Chichi, God will bless you. Appreciate you, and God will bless you. My dear um, sister-in-law, Professor Fumi, God bless you. Nice to see you on. Sister Abis, 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 God bless you. It is well with your soul. And God will increase you all. Thank you very much, my dear daughter, the um, minister Bridget, all the way from Italy. God bless you. We appreciate you all. And on, on YouTube, you know, we have two f platforms on YouTube. The great man of God, all the way from Meeting Case. Um, Pastor Mike, God bless you. And Brother Jimmy, Jimmy, God bless you. We do appreciate you. And God will bless, increase, and prosper you all in the name of So, I greet you all. God will bless, increase, and prosper you. And going to shine in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you all the praise, glory, honor. My marvelous, <laughs> marvelous King, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We thank and we bless and we worship and we praise and we adore you. My Father, we bless and worship and accept our thanks in Jesus' name. My dear Father, thank you, Lord, for the grace you've given to us to be here again in your presence where there's fullness of joy. We thank, we bless, we worship, we praise, we adore you, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Every sin, Lord, forgive in Jesus' name, send your power into our midst. Holy Ghost, have your way, prove yourself. Let your name be glorified. We come against every evil work of the enemy in the air, in the sky, in the moon, in the sea, under the water. We bind them, we cast it to hell in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, have your way. Move like never before. Mighty Father, we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. The gadgets, the connections, Mighty Father, the links, we cover with the blood of Jesus. Begin to have your way, prove yourself, and let your name be glorified. Mighty Father, El Shaddai, people have come on, your children have come on. Bless them in Jesus' name. Walk your wonders. Meet them at the very point of their need. Thank you, Lord, we bless you. We give you all the praise in Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. It is well with your soul. We bless God. The God we are serving is a mighty God. And He's going to begin to work His wonders and miracles even in every life in Jesus' name. You know why uh, I was laughing the other time? God has given us laughter. God is trying to tell people who are there that many people are out there, they have sorrow of heart because of what they are going through. Some are a little bit scared because of this pandemic. Because they see that it's spreading, but God is telling me to tell you that put your mind at rest. No evil will come near, near your dwelling. Now, God is putting laughter on our faces, in our mouth. Now, if you want to be part of those who will laugh this year, just type it, laughter, 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 laughter. And God is going to occur. See, whereby you go to laugh throughout this year. In the first month, second month, third month, fourth month, fifth month, sixth month, seventh month, eighth month, ninth month, tenth month, eleventh month, and twelfth month. Go to smile throughout this year. Laughter. As you as you type that laughter, guess what? Laughter shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. And Jehovah God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work, even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. So once again, you are welcome in Jesus' name. We do appreciate you for having the time to join us. And God will bless, increase, and prosper. If you want to know more about us, about the church, about Pastor Michael and myself, you can go to our website. That's our website on the screen. And God will bless, increase, and prosper you. It tells you and gives you everything you need to know about uh, the church. And God will honor you. And God will bless, increase, and prosper you. And work wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. This is your season to arise and shine, to prosper and succeed. And begin to prosper and succeed in the name of Jesus. And also... Um, for those who are joining us and new, we air this program every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Prophetic hour, where we receive words that will encourage our soul and lift up our spirit. Words that would encourage our soul and lift up our soul. And I know that our spirits are already lifted up mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. We are so glad you are able to join us. And God will work a miracle for you and for me and for every one of us mightily and marvelously in the name of the, I see a digger, I see a digger, I see a digger. And I see the angel of God holding the digger. Hmm. And I said, what is this for, God? Lord, and the Lord says that he wants to dig out blessings, hidden blessings, hidden blessings. He, God is giving me an analogy that, you know, the best things that human beings fight over, the best things that are most expensive are found in the ground. Be it diamond, be it gold, be it oil, be it gas, be it uranium, whatever it is, it's all found in the ground. People dig the ground, man digs the ground, and they begin to discover precious things, precious stones. So God is telling me that he wants to dig. He wants to dig great things for you and I. Now, if you want God to dig and give you the great things that 
are hidden in this on this earth where we are standing, just start digger, 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 and God will begin to dig it out. Because I see the angels of God holding that digger. You know that digger that is pointed and they're about to dig. And as we begin to type digger or type digger, God will begin to work his wonders and he will dig out. The angels of God will begin to dig out everything that's meant for you and I shall be dug out in the name of Jesus. I declare again, it shall be dug out in the name of Jesus. And God will begin to work his wonders. And so digger, digger is a trigger word. You know, this program, you have trigger words. Digger is a trigger word. And that will trigger the angels of God to begin to dig, 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 dig. And as dig we get our blessings mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. so once again you are welcome to series three of this uh, prophetic hour we bless god and we thank god for his goodness and mercy the way maker series way maker series and god will make ways for you and for me and for every one of us in the name of jesus mm, thank you lord i hear god say for one person i don't know who that person is for one person for one person for one person just for one person that in the area of marriage, delay is over. In the area of marriage, delay is over. And for this particular individual, before the end of this year, they will get married. Not find the person, the person will be found. Has been found, the person will meet them. But this year, this year, they will get married. They will get married. For just one person, one person, one person, I see that one person getting married this year. God has made the way, it has been found, and he has made the way. If that is you, tap it, that's me, or oh, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. Let God locate you, wherever you are. It's me, it's me. Just that one person, I see, I see you wearing, wearing a, a wear, I, I see you, I see you putting on a wear, um, sorry, a wedding gown. I see you putting on a wedding gown, and God is telling me to tell you that, you know what, you are next in line for, to get married. And if that should just start, it's me, it's me, it's me. And God will begin to work his wonders and miracles, even in every life and destiny, mightily and marvelously in the name of God. Now let's go into what we have today, please. Very important, keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing. And God will bless, increase and prosper you. That's the details to share. Let's invite as many people as possible. Let's call our friends from far and near. And God will bless, increase and prosper you in the name of God. Once again, we appreciate you being able to join us on this program. We don't take it for granted. You are always there. You are always on time, always on spot, and you are always responding. We do appreciate you, and God will bless, increase, and prosper you in the name of Jesus. Today, I believe it's gift time because I see a box, you know, a box, those box that they keep jewelries, you know, is special. And I see the box being opened, and I see a very, very, very costly a very beautiful jewelry in it, a gem, jewelry in it. I said, like, "What is this, God? What is this God?" God says He wants to bless ten people in our midst. Now, the first ten that that gem will be theirs. There's something pe pe peculiar and spectacular that will take place in your life this year. You know, this is just the beginning of the year for those ten people. The first ten that type the word gem, G E M, gem, gem, because I see a great gem in that box, and the box is open, and I see the angels of God about to give it to. People, so if you want to be part and parcel of the first 10, this is for 10 people that receive just that gem, G E M, G E M, and the angel of God will give. I have received my own, you know, so nine left, you know, I've taken my own, the one that God revealed to, so I've taken my own, nine left. So for the nine people that are left for this year, you know, God will work his wonder. There will be great and spectacular things that will take place in, in our lives. Let me put my in our lives, the last of those 10 people. Ten people, one including the nine out there. And you know, God will begin to work wonders and miracles, even in our lives and destinies in the name of God. Now, let's go into what we have today. And God will bless us. Let's open our Bibles, please, to the book of First Kings. The book of First Kings. The book of First Kings, chapter 17, verses 1 to 9. First Kings 17, 1 to 9. But today... I'll just read verses 1 to 3, because that's what we're going to talk about. That's First Kings chapter 17, 1 to 9, but today we're going to read 1 to 3, and God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work, even in every life and destiny, in the name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. So do we have it already? The book of First Kings chapter 17, verses 1 to 3. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. I see honey. I see honey. I see honey being poured from heaven. I see honey. And it's being poured. I see people having spoon and, and getting the hon honey. And the amazing thing is that the honey does not 
pour out of the spoon. So people have teaspoon, some people have tablespoon, some people have serving spoon, some people have soup spoon, you know, there are different spoons. Some people have the big spoon that when they are frying things, different, different spoons. But I see that everybody is getting honey. Now, if you want, and, and God says you want to sweeten life, that this year, he wants to sweeten life. This is a year that God wants to sweeten life for those who are joining. Now, if you want God to sweeten your life, type the word honey, 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 honey. God will sweeten your life. God will sweeten my life. God will sweeten every life that types honey, 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 honey. Thank you, Lord. Have your way. <coughs> Let your name be glorified in Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Now, the book of First Kings, First Kings chapter 17. Verses 1 to 3. I believe we are there already. 1 Kings 17, 1 to 3. And the Bible said, Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, as the Lord the God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall neither be dew nor rain these years except by my word. Verse 2, and the word of the Lord came to him. 3, depart from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. Father, we thank and we bless you. We praise and we adore you. As you are going to go with us, speak to us. Let your name be glorified. We give you all the praise, glory, honor. Marvelous King, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Touch us and speak to us and do a new work. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name, we pray. Hmm. There's somebody who is worried. God is not telling what you are worried about. There's somebody who is worried. I don't know what you are worried about, but there's somebody who is worried out there. There's somebody who is worried. I see, when anytime God reveals to me a pendulum or a, like a bell, you know, the bell, the long thing in the bell, that means that there's, there's somebody who is worried. There's somebody who is worried. I don't know what you are worried about. But God is telling me to tell you that he has taken charge and control of that situation. He has taken charge and control of that situation that is making you to be worried. I hear God say, do not worry. Do not worry. Worry is not your portion. Do not worry. My brother, my sister, Adia, do not worry. 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 If that is you, just type it out. I'm letting the matter go. When you are letting the matter go into the hands of God, I am letting the matter go. Or the matter go, just matter go, matter go, matter go, matter go, the matter go, the matter go. And God will begin to work his wonders and we deal with that. So whatever is causing you to be worried, to have sleepless nights, to lose appetite, not to be happy, not to think straight, I hear God say that is dealing with the matter go, matter go, just have that matter go, matter go, matter go, matter go. And the matter will go and God will begin to work his wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of let the matter go god that um, our um that we should cast all our anxieties on cast all casting all your anxieties on christ for he cares about you so cast it on him raise it to him and he begin to work his wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of jesus now um you know we'll be talking about um talking about the farming, the farming, the way maker series. The farming, the way maker series. Now, if you have missed any of this part, this is part three. You missed part one or, um, part, or part two, part one and part two. Don't worry. You can go to our Facebook page or YouTube and then you can begin to listen. And God will bless you. This is a follow up of, of what you're talking about. So you're talking about God, who is the way maker. This God is the way maker. You know, many a times people encounter a period of famine in their lives in one way or the other. Not necessarily famine that there's no food, but famine can dissipate or represent anything. Well, whatever famine represents in your, in your life or destiny, I declare that the Lord will deal with it and remove it by fire in the name of Jesus. But if you can trust God, this God will make a way of escape. I declare a way of escape. The Lord will open for you mightily in the name of God, in the name of Jesus because it's the way maker and this God will make a way. Are you ready to trust it? So we're talking about the farming. God himself will remove every farming from our lives in Jesus. And we're going to talk about how we can we can overcome farming in our life. And we said number one, we should understand that every life encounters farming one way or the other. No one is exempted from it. There's always a time of famine in a, in a life. It's not a cause. Because the Bible says 
In this world, you have tribulation, but be of good cheer because he, the Lord, has overcome the world. So, you know, there is always a famine, but the Lord himself will deliver you and I out of famine. Whether famine of not being able to marry or not having a child or not having a good job or not having good finances or not living in your house, whatever the famine may be, I declare that because you are watching, the Lord will deliver you. The Lord will deliver you. If you want God to deliver you, type it out, deliver me, O Lord. Deliver me, O Lord. Deliver me, O Lord. From whatever famine that the enemy has used to hold you down, I declare the Lord himself will deliver you by fire and by power in the name of Jesus. No more famine. No more famine. And number two, last week we spoke about Revelation. Revelation comes from the word of God. Now we began to talk about that famine that famine can come in every form anyway. It was a man of God that declared a famine in this in the in the world of those days in Israel and a famine came. Now after that revelation we spoke about revelation from the word of God. That what revelation have you received from the word of God? Each time you read the word of God, there needs to be something that will jump out to you at you as revelation. That is, you now have an in-depth in depth into the word of God. So the word of God, the, the word of God you read today, yesterday, what was the revelation that you received from me? The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 2, and the word of God came to him. The word of God must always come to us. We must spend time in the word of God and be in the word of God and abide in the word of God. Do, do not allow this word to depart out of your mind. Meditate on it day and night that that may prosper in your way. So we need to meditate on the word of God day and night. And every time we meditate, what happens? We get a revelation. And then today we are moving on. We are moving on to comfort zone. What do you by comfort zone? You want to know what comfort zone is? Where you are at peace. Where you think sometimes you've gotten to your destination. Where you think that this is the place that God is taking you. Whereby God has better things for you. Now when you look at this story, the Bible says that, And the word of the Lord came to him, verse 3, Depart from here and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the brook of Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. Now, when you look at this, Elijah came from somewhere. We don't know where he came from. The Bible says Elijah of Tishba. He came from Tishba in Gilead. That's where he came out from. Now, there was a place he was staying. There was a place of comfort. There was a place he was before he went to meet Ahab. And now, the, the word of God, God did not allow Elijah to go back to his comfort zone because he had something greater for him. You know, each time God is telling us to leave our comfort zone, he has something great for you and I. That is why we must not dwell in our comfort zone. We must not fold arms in our comfort zone. We must not think that we have gotten to where we are going in our comfort zone because God has something better. And that's why God will remove people, take people out of their comfort zone because they are thinking they have gotten to where they are going whereby God has greater things for them. Capital, God has greater things for me. God has greater plans for me. The plans I have for you are not to are not are not the plans I have for you and are to prosper you and not to pull you down, to give you a, an expected end. That's what the Bible says. Um, I'm paraphrasing it, Jeremiah 29, 11. Uh, the thoughts I have towards you are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you hope and expected end. So God wants to give us an expected end. So that's why Sometimes God will take us out of the comfort zone and take us to where he wants us to be. That's why we need to be praying that, Lord, let me be where you want me to be. Sometimes we are in a place whereby we are comfortable, we are happy, not knowing that God has a great plan for you. And that's why we put comfort zone with a question mark. Are you dwelling? Are you staying? Are you sleeping in your comfort zone? Or are you ready to move? Now, when we look through the Bible, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 12 that Abraham was in a place. He was enjoying himself. He has pitched his tent. He was. He has been there for quite a while. His father was. His father was there and the father died there. I said, okay, let me continue being here. And he was there. Suddenly, God arose. And said that, Abraham, arise, get out of your country and from your kindred and from your family and go to a land that I will show you. Abraham was being comfortable where he was and God pulled him out. May God pull us out to a greater height. May God pull us out into our destiny. When we are too comfortable in our comfort zone, God arises. Sometimes, you know, when somebody is in a comfort zone, God sometimes brings tribulation. He brings trouble. He brings 
um, people, he makes people to be uncomfortable. Why? Because there's a greater place that God is taking that in the there. And because they are too comfortable in their comfort zone, God brings them out. May God bring you out. So many times, God, bring me out. Bring me out. Bring me out. God needs to bring you out of your comfort zone. Don't be too comfortable in that comfort zone. Except God has told you that this is where he's taking you. Because many a times, we human beings, we are comfortable in our comfort zone. Think of that. Okay, this is where God wants me to be. Let me relax. I don't need to accept more energy. I don't need to pray more. I don't need to fast more. I don't need to seek God more. I'm in my place. So let me just enjoy the goodness of God. Let me enjoy the breeze of God. Let me enjoy the blessing of God. But you know what? God wants us to move out of our comfort zone. Look at David. David was in his comfort zone. Talking about you need to leave your comfort zone. David was in his comfort zone. And the, and the Bible says that David was a shepherd. He began to look after the sheep, after the goat, after the cattle. And when lion and bear came, they attacked him. They had to attack. They took away the sheep and he rescued them and killed them. So David was very comfortable in the comfort zone because it was a place where once the animals have eaten, he can relax and begin to play the lion begin to play the music and begin to form songs and he had a comfortable time nobody troubled him nobody disturbed him because the bible said that he was by, by with the sheep and no one went to where he was but a time came david was becoming too comfortable he took god through his servant to call david out of his comfort zone because if david has still been with the sheep guess what he would have missed the opportunity of killing goliath he would have missed destiny. So sometimes God will call us out of our comfort zone. He called Elijah. Elijah was in a pain. So okay, go and meet the king. And he went to meet the king. And I was thinking that Elijah was trying to go back to where? To his comfort zone. God said, no, 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 no. You're not going back there. You are going to a place. Stay in the rock. You know, stay in the rock. And other, it's not a comfortable place. We don't know if there was a hut there or a house there. But he has to stay there. And he stayed there. Because God moved him from his comfort zone because God wanted him to have a special time with him. That's why sometimes God will move us out of our comfort zone because you, God doesn't want you to be too comfortable where you are. When you're too comfortable, there's trouble. Look at Esther. Esther was comfortable with her uncle, Mordecai. She was staying there. The father had died. The mother had died. And she was staying with the uncle. The uncle fed her very well. Took care of her very well. Said, okay, no problem. Let me be. Until that moment came when there was a need. Sometimes need takes us out of our comfort zone. May we encounter a need that will take you and I out of our comfort zone. A need came and Esther had to leave her uncle and go to the palace and stay there for almost a year before she was established. She left her comfort zone. Check the Bible. We need, sometimes we need to leave our comfort zone. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at Jephthah. Talking about people that left, Jephthah was very comfortable when his father was alive. He was staying with his brothers, his siblings, his steps, and they enjoyed themselves. But when the father died, they drove him out of his comfort zone. Sometimes we need to be driven out of our comfort zone. But when you're not driven out of your comfort zone, you become too comfortable and you will not move forward. That's why we God needs to jack us up and wake us up. Now we can move out of our comfort zone. Are you too comfortable where you are? Watch out. Let something happen to you that you can move out of your comfort zone. I know some people have gotten there whether they're comfortable. Yes. But I'm talking about those who are not there here. Let something let be, let there be an earthquake that will shake you out of your comfort zone. We need to be shaken out of our comfort zone. At the comes again, we need to be shaken out of our comfort zone so that we can focus on to where God is taking us. Look at Jephthah. After a while, they drove him out of his comfort zone. You will not inherit with us. You are the son of a bastard. Even though our father took care of you, but now comfort zone is over. Get away. And the Bible says, Jephthah got away. Now, if Jephthah had stayed in his comfort zone, do you know that he would not have realized that he was a warrior? When he drove him he went to the bush and became a warrior and he became a mighty man that after a while they came to beg him to become king over them and deliver them. Now, if Jephthah had not left his comfort zone or driven away from his comfort zone, do you know what? Jephthah would not have become the leader or a judge in Israel. Comfort zone. Sometimes comfort zone may be too dangerous, too comfortable. Look at Peter. Peter, John, James, Andrew, they were in their comfort zone as per fishermen. 
They were enjoying their fishing. They were having a nice time and they were in comfort zone until Christ came and appeared. From now on, you are not going to be catching fish. You will be catching men. You become fishers of men. And they left their comfort zone. And guess what? Even after Jesus was with them for three years or three and a half years, they went back to their comfort zone. It took Christ to come again and tell Peter, do you love me? Do you like me? Do you, do you like me? Now, take care of my lamb. Now, feed my sheep and tend my sheep. It took, it took, it took Jesus to come and shake Peter out of his comfort zone because if you had not come back, Peter would have got, the Bible said that Peter took about seven disciples. He was taking them to go and preach. He took them to go and fish because he was trying to get back to his comfort zone. But it took Christ. Sometimes it will take Christ to take us out of our comfort zone. How many times Shake me out of my comfort zone. We need to be shaken out of our comfort zone because if Christ is again, people become too comfortable where they are. For example, somebody is a tenant and the landlord is so good to you. Well, by the landlord tell you that, okay, and you have missed six months. Don't worry, let's start again. You've missed another two months. Don't worry, I'll start again. If that person is not careful, they will, God forbid, they will die in that house. Why? Because they will say, the landlord is so nice. Oh, I have a testimony. Praise God. God did a great work in my life. I owed six months rent and my landlord came after I've prayed and said, don't worry, I've written it off. Start again. Then you come again. Oh, it was three months. He wrote it off. If care is not taken, that individual will stay in that house forever because it becomes a comfort zone. But when the landlord is pestering you, you have just paid the, the, the rent for one year and the year is not even ending. Ten months, landlord is troubling you again that you bring the money for the next one year or two years. You will shake yourself. What's wrong with this man? What's wrong with this woman? I've paid. Why are they troubling me? And you will now think because he's trying, he's pestering you in your comfort zone. So, okay, I too, I can build it house and you go out there and build your own house or buy your own house or mortgage your house and get the house. Why? Because where you are, they make it uncomfortable for you. I pray this prayer. It may look as if it's a, it's a bad prayer, but it's a good prayer for you. Where you are, that you are uncomfortable, that God has greater things for you, may you become uncomfortable. I don't know if you can say amen, but I'm being realistic now. Sometimes God will make people to be uncomfortable so they can move to their area of comfort. Look at Moses. Moses was born. For 40 years, Moses was comfortable in the palace, enjoyed, ate good food, had good education, had all that thing. But after 40 years, he became uncomfortable. Whereby after he killed a man and people began to say, this man is a killer, is a killer. And he had to run away. And now he ran away from that comfort. And then he went to another place and for another 40 years, he was comfortable. He had forgotten the vision, the dream. He married, he had children. He became a cartoon Can you imagine? For another 40 years, he became comfortable. And God said, Moses, you are becoming too comfortable. I have an assignment for you. After 40 years again, God appeared to him. I will send you to Pharaoh. Going back to where he escaped. Going back to where he was afraid. And God sent him back. And he became a mighty warrior. He became a mighty deliverer. God wrought great miracles through the hand of this same Moses. But what happened? God had to shake him out of his comfortable zone. Are you still in your comfortable zone? Elijah was there. I wanted to go back there. He came from Tishba and I wanted to go back there. And God said, you cannot go back there. I have an assignment for you. Go back. Go to the east of Jordan. That's where I want you to be. I have made sure, I have made sure to make sure, but go to the east of Jordan. Don't go back to Tishba. Don't go back to Gilead. I know that's where you come from. I know that's your comfort zone. But Elijah, don't go back there. The word of God came as a revelation and he went to where he was supposed to go. He did not stay where he was. Comfort zone. Sometimes when we are too comfortable, you are in a place of work, you are very comfortable, which is good, they are doing you nice, but you know what? You have more potential. When you go out there, you achieve more, but because you are comfortable, you are too comfortable where you are, you are relaxed. Sometimes God needs to shake us out of our comfort zone. You need to come out of your comfort zone. 
You know, you can go to the Bible and begin to talk about people who were in their comfort zone and God shook them out. Look at the, look at look at the centurion. He was in his comfort zone and God shook him out. That look, what you are doing is good, but it's not right. You are too comfortable. You need to hear the right word that will lead you around. So that you can come with me. You can reign with me on the last day. And he had a word. When we are too much in our comfort zone, there are issues. Because if you don't. If you don't move, if you don't open your eyes, that person may be in that comfort zone for a long time. But God may have something better for that individual. That's why you see trouble, challenges, tribulation, disappointment are things that will shake us out of our comfort zone. I say once again, trouble, challenges, ups and downs, sometimes disaster. It takes disaster to shake us out of our comfort zone. Look at um, Jacob. Jacob was comfortable with Laban for 14 years because he was working for a woman. He worked on, on he paid the money and then he got the price and the second one, he, he worked on credit. So he was so comfortable being with Laban, nurturing the cattle, having a nice time until Laban cheated him 12, 10 times. He changed his wages 10 times. Now, he woke up. If Laban had not changed the wages of Jacob 10 times, he had forgotten what God told him, that I will be with you, I will go with you, I will make you prosper. But because he, 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 he had a free house, free everything, free, I know he worked for the wives, free everything, he became comfortable. But God sent Laban to him to pester him 10 times, 10 times. Laban used him, Laban, Laban cheated him, and then after the 14th year, he now woke up. May we wake up. Some of wake up, some of wake up, 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 wake up. Somebody say, wake up, wake up, wake up. You need to wake up. Stop dwelling in your comfort zone. Stop, stop thinking that you are comfortable in your comfort zone. When God has something better, something great, something wonderful for you, Come out of your comfort zone. Can someone type that out again? Come out of your comfort zone. Come out of your comfort zone. We need to come out of our comfort zone. If Elijah did not come out from where he was, from Tishba and Gilead, you know, we would not have heard the story of Elijah. But because God pulled him out of the comfort zone. And guess what? We don't know how old he was. We don't know how many years, but we know that he will came out. If he had stayed and, do you know, if he had gone back to Gilead, where he came out from, do you know that? That, would, that may have been the end of Elijah. And God knew because we never knew him. He just came out. His way just came in that um, first King 17. That he just, he was just mentioned Elijah um, of the Tishbite from Tibia in Gilead. Just came out just like that. If he had gone back, do you know that he would have been a forgotten case. May we not be a forgotten case. That is why you see, you and I, we need to wake up. Come out of your comfort zone. Come out of your comfort zone. Stop managing. Stop trying to push. Stop trying to make ends meet. Come out of your comfort zone. Stop dwelling in your comfort zone. Because when we begin to dwell in comfort zone, there are issues. Look. Um, Peter wanted to build a comfort zone, and I'll explain to you. When they went on the mountain with Jesus, Peter, James, and John, and Jesus was transfigured before them. He said, Ah, Lord, it is good that we are here. Let me build a booth, three booths. I don't know where they wanted to get the materials to build those booths. They wanted to build a booth, one for Elijah, one for Moses, and one for you, so that we can dwell here. But Jesus said, no, this is not comfort zone. I have assignment to do. I have not come to stay on the mountain. I have I have an assignment. I have a destination. I am going to Jerusalem. I cannot make this my comfort. Sometimes we create comfort zones that are wrong for ourselves and remain there and make ourselves happy there. We know that it's the wrong thing. But just to give ourselves peace of mind, we, we, we convince ourselves that this is what God wants for us. Not only that, God has greater plans for you and I. Stop having a pretend comfort zone. Go for it for the original comfort zone that God has for you. Stop, stop, stop building a comfort zone that does not exist. Make sure that you stay and dwell in the comfort zone that God has for you. God has a comfort zone for every individual. 
One thing is that we need to be led by the Spirit of God and discover our comfort zone. I say once again, we need to be led by the Spirit of God and discover our comfort zone. My question tonight is that have you discovered your comfort zone or are you still searching? Which one is it? Have you discovered your comfort zone or are you still searching? Comfort zone, as good as comfort is, we need to be in the right zone where God wants us to be. And where we are, when we are, where God wants to be. Guess what? There will be miracles. Look at the apostles and the first Christians. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7. They were all in Jerusalem. When Jesus has told them in Acts 1 8, you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Judah, in Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. They all stayed. They were comfortable in Jerusalem. They preached in Jerusalem. All the miracles that happened from Acts 1 up until about chapter 8. No, chapter 7 after after Philip, after after Stephen. You know. They were all, everything happened in Jerusalem. Nothing happened outside Jerusalem. And God now realized that, look, if I don't shake these people up, they will just preach and end up in Jerusalem. The gospel will not go to the ends of the earth. What did God do? God raised Saul to shake the church up, to persecute the church. Because if Stephen was not, the Bible said, after Stephen was, was killed, there arose a great persecution against the church that all disciples were dispersed. Now, if the prophecy has come, oh, my children, go to the very end of the earth, they will not listen. Some will listen, will not go. But because a great persecution arose, they began to run for their lives. In running for their lives, one of the dickim, Philip, that was chosen, went to Samaria. Imagine if their persecution was not, did not arise. He would have been in their comfort zone, still serving tables as a deacon. But God had a great career for him. I have come to God has a great career for you. May your eyes open to the career that God has for you. May your eyes open to the to the to the goals and dreams that God has for you. May your eyes open to your destination. Philip was not just supposed to be a deacon serving table. He's supposed to be an evangelist. It took persecution for him to leave his comfort zone and discover his calling. Sometimes persecution is good for you and I to discover our calling. Look at this COVID. I see COVID as persecution. But you know, many people are discovering what God has called. If not for COVID, look at me, if not for COVID, I'll just be doing this one week. One week of prophetic hour. One week of prophetic hour. Once a week. Once a week. But because of COVID, we had lockdown prayers. We have church program. We have a program some Fridays, you know, some Fridays that we do live VG Friday and so on and so forth. Due to COVID, for COVID, in one way, is a wake-up call. Call God, you allow COVID to come so that we Christians can wake up. It took persecution from Saul for the church to wake up. And the church woke up. And then the gospel began to spread. Samaria, uh, this same Philip, put to the Enoch, and he went to Ethiopia, Africa, and um, John, John and John and Peter went to Samaria, and the gospel spread all over the world. It was this same Peter that went to the Gentiles that they never were supposed to go. If they were in their comfort zone, guess what? They would have still remained there. But thank God for persecution. Sometimes persecution is good. We, we shouldn't pray against persecution. We should pray, that, Lord, the what you want to bring out of this trial, what you want to bring out of this persecution, Lord, let me see it and walk in it. Let me see it and walk in it. Because you and I, we need to walk in it, we need to see it, and we need to flow in what God has for you and I. Comfort zoom. Comfort zone. We need to pray the Lord. Open my eyes. Look at Elijah. Let me read it again. And I will end there. Elijah. I said Elijah. Sorry. First Kings chapter 17, 1 to 3. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain this year, except by my word. Elijah came out of a place. Now, after he had finished what he came to say to Ahab the king, verse 2 says. And the word of the Lord came to him. Maybe he was going in the direction of going back to Tishbe and uh, Tishbe in Gilead. I don't know. And the word of the Lord came to him. Depart from here where you are. Don't stay in Gilead. Don't stay in Tishbe because nobody knows you there. The assignment I have for is beyond Gilead. You need to get out. 
Go and hide your turn eastward and hide yourself in the brook, which is the east of Jordan. Tell me what relation has the brook with where he came out from. No relationship, no relation, but God wanted to take him out of his comfort zone. May our eyes be opened so that you and I can come out of our comfort zone. Don't be too comfortable. Ah! Let me pray. Don't be too comfortable. When you are too comfortable, you relax and 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 and, and accept things. Whatever will be, will be. What will be is what will be. Who told you that? We need to get out of our comfort zone. Stop managing. Stop pushing. Stop enduring. What you are enduring, God did not desire to endure it. He had designed you to leave your comfort zone and move ahead and find solution and it will support you and it will back you up and it will make you move forward. Leave your comfort zone. Can somebody type that out, please? Leave your comfort zone. Leave your comfort zone. You need to leave your comfort zone. You know, when we are in our old church, God spoke to my wife and myself that I leave the church. I was telling God that, Lord, this place is comfortable. This place is good. They're not troubling us. We are free to do what we are doing. And God was telling us that I have a greater assignment for you. And God said that if you don't leave, the way I will disgrace you. My wife and I, we had to carry our bag and leave. And thank God, see us today. If we had just stayed, only God knows what would have happened to us. So it's always good to leave... I'm telling you, at least we are comfortable there. We had free hand. We could we could do what God wanted us to do in that church. I'm not saying there wasn't opposition. Yes, but we that did not stop us. But when God said leave, we left and see where we are today. Either myself or my wife. See where we are today. God has helped us so much. What we are able to achieve when we left. I tell you, I'm not, we will not be able to have achieved because we would have been stopped in the stride. And that's why God saw. Look, Chris, forget, leave. That comfort zone. Go to where... So we left the comfort zone for nothing. We had nothing, nothing, nothing whatsoever. And we're telling God, Lord, we are leaving something for nothing. And God has never disappointed us. Why? Because we left the comfort zone and went into where God wanted us to be. And thank God, when we look back, we have every cause to glorify the name of God. Why? Because we left our comfort zone. Are you ready? to pay the price and leave your comfort zone for where God is taking you. Are you ready? That's why I gave you examples in the Bible of those who thought they were comfortable and God stirred them up. Look, this is not where you are supposed to be. This is not what you are supposed to be doing. Look at Saul. Saul was comfortable. I mean, uh, Apostle Saul, Paul. Saul was comfortable being a Pharisee and comfortable being killing and comfortable defending the law and, and Moses until he had an encounter with God. May we have an encounter with God that will change our perspective and, head and, 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 and lead us in the right direction that we will leave our comfort zone. Paul had to leave his comfort zone. By the time Paul came back, you know, he had to, Paul, this Paul that walked God justly into Damascus, he had to escape from Damascus through the world. He went to Jerusalem. He had to sneak in Jerusalem. He had to hide in Jerusalem because comfort had gone. Before Paul could walk around, he would walk with soldiers. He would arrest anybody, anyone who is calling them of Jesus. He would arrest them, put them in prison. He even went to the high priest and the chief priest and got letters from them. That's how comfortable he was until God broke the back of that comfort and said, that, Paul, I have a greater work for you. Now, focus on what I have for you. And he lost, that's why Paul said, I count everything as lost because of Christ. Because when you look, about, when you look back very well, he had a lot of things and he had the prestige, he had the power, he was a land by the feet of Gamaliel and he was so great, he was so tough, he was so, so, so zealous for the law until God removed him from his comfort zone. I pray today, if it, if it needs to take God to move us out of our comfort zone, to take us to where we are supposed to be, may God move us out. May God move us out. I think I'll end there tonight. May God move us out. It's a food for thought for you that leave your comfort zone. Leave your comfort zone. Leave your comfort zone. Because God has great work, greater works for you. He has a better place for you. But this can only happen if you leave your comfort zone. May God give us, give us the grace to leave our comfort zone. Just one prayer point. Father, we thank you. 
I want to pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Glorify you. We give you all the praise. Glory. No matter we have had your word about comfort zone. Mighty Father, we don't want to end up in that comfort zone that we think is a comfort zone and you know it's not a comfort zone for us. Move us out of that comfort zone and take us to where you want us to be. Because where you want us to be, we will become great achievers, we will prosper, we will make it, we will succeed. But if I give us that grace, that we ask for that grace to have the last time. If it takes, if it needs to take a thunder, a hurricane, an earthquake, my father, a tribulation, my father, a challenge to take us out of the comfort zone into what you want us to be, Lord, let it happen so that we can move out because we know that you have a greater thing or better thing for us. We shall move out of the comfort zone and move into where you want us to be by your grace. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. We pray. Amen. 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 And just said, quickly, if you're out there, you're not giving your life to Jesus, the greatest miracle is to be saved. You want to give your life to Christ, just say this simple prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come before you. I know I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. Lord, I have been too comfortable in sin and I want to leave sin alone. I'm moving to you. Give me the grace, mighty Father, to walk in you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse me. Give me your Holy Ghost to empower me and save me, Lord, from the devil. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me the way I am. Thank you, Lord, for taking me out of the comfort zone of sin, of pleasure of life, and moving me into you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. If you have just said this prayer, guess what? You are born again. Your life is now hidden in Christ. And miracles, signs, and wonders begin to take place even in your life and destiny. And you know what? Your name has just been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So you're welcome to the family. God will bless in case and prosper you. And God will honor you. Look for a Bible-believing church and begin to go. And God will bless you quickly. Quickly, before I go, don't forget to like our Facebook page. Love our Facebook page and follow our Facebook page. Like it, share it, follow it. I begin to do that. God will bless you. And also for our YouTubers, and I said that there are a lot of people on YouTube today. God bless you. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. God will begin to work His wonders and miracles. You will never laugh in Jesus' name. Please, before you leave YouTube, subscribe to our channel and press the notification button, and God will bless you. And don't forget about our programs, our online programs. Our online programs, Sundays at 10 a.m. We have Sunday worship service, very great, mighty, because we're working wonders. Join us Sundays at 10 a.m. Because I'm going myself. And on Sundays, in Sunday evening, we have um, Couples Forum, where we talk about how to live it together in love, peace, and harmony. Join us Wednesday, which is tomorrow. We have Bible study, 7 p.m. Uh, Bible study is very interactive. Join us, and God will bless. <coughs> Excuse me. Mightily, in the name of Jesus. And on Fridays, Fridays, we have prayer meeting, prayer meeting, if you have a, an urgent prayer request, send it in our messenger or Facebook inbox us and God will bless you. That's Fridays at 7 p.m. this Friday by God's grace. And then my wife, Pastor Funke, has Hear My Cry, Sundays 6 a.m., Mondays 11 p.m., Wednesdays tomorrow 1 p.m., Thursdays 1 p.m. by the grace of God for healing service on Thursday. And on Friday, I think it's day 4, um, um, Friday 4 of women prayer. So there are female out there at 9 p.m. by the grace of God. And then we have every Tuesday, prophetic hour at 9 p.m. UK time. And then we have lockdown two prayers by God's grace session um, um, Thursdays at, at 9 p.m. Join us and God will bless and increase and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. I believe and I know you continue to arise and shine prosper and succeed and this is going to begin to work its wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. You continue to arise and shine. I want to pray for you as we round this up and God will bless you mightily and marvelously in the name. But once again, we really appreciate you joining us. Please, please, please make sure you take what you have had into practice. Sit down tonight and check your surroundings and see which I'll tell God to open your eyes so that you will not be too comfortable in your in that comfort zone that is not comfort zone, that that's not the plan of God for you. And God will move you into where you're supposed to be. And God will bless you in the name of the Father. We thank you. I pray for all our viewers. You bless them in Jesus' name. You give them eye openers, and your name shall be glorified. I declare and I decree that Lord, every one of us will move into where you want us to be in the name of Jesus. You will establish us, you will make us, you will bless us. As you help Moses, you help Abraham, you help Isaac, you help Jacob, you help uh, Esther. My father, you will help us in the name of Jesus and you will uphold us. You will take us to a land of destination and your name shall be glorified. 
Father, we honor and we bless you. We shall not be like the Israelites that were dwelling on the mountain, thinking that that's where they were going to. And you have to tell them, you have dwelt on this mountain for too long. Move forward. Lord, we are moving forward. The grace to move forward, Lord, give it to us. Thank you, Lord, we bless you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name. For all the pastors, thank you for joining. God will bless you. I do appreciate you, my dear. Pastor Funke, God will bless you. Pastor Mike, God will bless you, sir. Minister Kids, Pastor Chichi, God will bless you. Minister Bridget, God will bless you. I do appreciate you all. Pastor Margaret, God will bless you. I can see you. God will bless you all. All the men and women of God, God will bless you. All the brothers and sisters, man and woman, dickiness and dickiness, God will bless you all. I do appreciate you. Looking forward to seeing you again by the grace of God tomorrow for Bible study. But we'll meet again next week by God's on prophetic hour. Put a reminder. Make sure you watch this program. Share it. And next week, we have another exciting topic that will change your perspective. May God help us in the name of God. God bless you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye and bye-bye.